Well, good Wednesday evening. Meteorologist Evan Stewart here with Hurricane Hub Live. We do this every Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock right here on 13 News Now Plus, where we talk about what's going on in the tropics and haven't had a lot to talk about in the Atlantic, that's for sure. But the Pacific have a little bit going on, and there are some signs that things are about to change as we go through the next couple of weeks. Of course, we're starting to get towards uh, the part of the hurricane season where things become a little more active, and that's one of our Tropic topics this evening. The quiet Atlantic will stick around probably for about another week, but there are some signs that we're starting to see some changes into the Atlantic. And as I mentioned, the Pacific remains very active. Of course, here we are at July 30th now, or almost two months into the six month Atlantic hurricane season. Of course, starts on June 1st and ends on November 30th. We can get activity before and after that, but that's sort of the window that we see most of the activity. And it's really once we get into August 1st, and go through the middle of September that we really see the activity start to ramp up. Then after the peak, September 10th, we start to see things wind down a little bit. But again, August, September, October, those are the three months that we really watch closely for activity in the Atlantic. So it's not all that unusual. And we haven't seen much here as we've gone through the months of June and July. We've had a couple of named storms. Uh, even had a, got up to Chantal, I believe, in the Atlantic. So Atlantic's still quiet, but the Pacific remains active. So let's talk about what's going on across the Atlantic right now. And again, there's not much to speak of. There was a wave back over the Western Caribbean. We talked about it yesterday, but that wave has now moved over towards the Yucatan Peninsula and no chance of development with that. And even here through the central Atlantic, through the intertropical convergence zone, there's really not much out there. One little wave right there. And there was one earlier that showed a little bit of some rotation, but not enough to really classify itself as anything more than just a wave. And we have we talked about it yesterday, this monsoon trough that sort of sets up here. And we see these waves move through coming off the coast of Africa. Here's another one that's developing that is going to push off the coast of Africa over the coming days. But right now, Hurricane Center is not highlighting any area for potential development over the next seven days. So that's why we're saying things are looking to be fairly quiet. However, the Climate Prediction Center looks at some of the longer range computer models and they put out a two week and a three week forecast of where there could potentially be tropical development. So this is the two week forecast. So this takes us August 6th through 12th. So that's still, you know, about a week away. And you'll notice that there is an area of potential development here. It's the low end of potential development, only about a 20% chance during that time period. But we have a couple of things going on. We have a front that's moving through here. And we've been seeing these fronts that'll move through and stall. And we've seen that earlier this year that sometimes these fronts stall across Florida, get a little bit of a spin going and we can get a homegrown system. And that looks like that potential is there as we get into the middle part of next week, the middle and the end of next week. So that potential is there. But we're also watching again those waves coming off the coast of Africa. So this is the European model. And what I have highlighted in here is areas of positive relative vorticity, or well, basically where there's spin in the atmosphere. And again, this is the European model. And just to move out of the way, you can see here, that's a little bit bigger area of potential development. That's, of course, over in the Pacific, but you can sort of see how that's highlighted. There's a little bit of a spin there uh, between Bermuda and Puerto Rico, but really nothing well organized. Some wide area spin here, but notice as we get into the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh there, of August, a little something there. We also have a front that's going to stall. So that's why the Climate Prediction Center is saying there's that potential there. Now it's not a great chance. You can see we're not seeing any well-defined area of spin. Pull your attention back over here to the Pacific and you can see there we have a much more defined area here off the coast of Mexico. We're just not really seeing that into the Atlantic for right now. Some of the longer range computer models, this one only goes out about nine days, but we have a few others that go out, you know, two weeks and some showing some signs of maybe something off the East Coast or West Coast of Florida. But again, that's a long ways away and a lot can change between now and then. But just some of the signs that we're looking at that things might start to get a little more active as we get into the month of August, as we would expect historically and based on the climatological averages that we start to see things start to ramp up. So. No need to be overly concerned at this point. Just some signs that the Atlantic might start to wake up a little bit in another week or two. Until then, enjoy the nice quiet that is out there 
in the Atlantic and what has really been the Atlantic hurricane season so far. Conversely, the Pacific continues to be active. We have waves here coming off the coast of Mexico that have chances for development. And we did have two named storms earlier. We had a hurricane, a major hurricane yesterday and a tropical storm. Well, that tropical storm has now weakened to just a remnant area of low pressure. Hurricane Center no longer issuing advisories on that. And Iona, which was a major hurricane yesterday, has now continued to weaken and is just a tropical storm here south of the islands of Hawaii. And again, not looking very well organized at all. At all. You can see how it's really falling apart and how the thunderstorm activity around it has just been pulled apart. So a little bit of thunderstorm activity a flare up here over the last couple of hours, but not enough to hold the system together for much longer. Of course, this is one of the concerns, some of the swells from the hurricane over the last few days for the islands of Hawaii. Of course, last night we had that massive 8.8 .8 earthquake off the coast of Russia that prompted tsunami warnings for the Hawaiian islands and there were some evacuations. People had to go from uh, low levels uh, right near the water, move inland up to higher ground or if you were in a hotel or a building right near the coastline, they wanted you to go up to at least the fourth floor. Fortunately, we didn't see any damage with the uh, tsunami that did develop. It wasn't a massive tsunami. I think the overall, over towards Midway, it was about a six foot wave above sea level. So enough that, you know, you, it certainly created the tsunami, but it did not create any kind of damage, certainly through parts of Hawaii or up towards the Aleutians or even towards the west coast of the United States, certainly caused some problems in Russia and a little bit in Japan. So that was one of the concerns last night. Of course, you had the hurricane, and at that point, you had a tropical storm just south of the Hawaiian Islands. So that's what's going on right now. Iona, tropical storm winds of 65 miles per hour moving to the west at 22, and it'll continue to move off towards the west and gradually weaken. So this takes us here in 2 p.m. Uh, that should be showing up here in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So again, that track crosses the international date line. That's why it's not plotting some of the days there since it throws the computer off a little bit since you're crossing the international date line. But again, remaining well south of the Hawaiian Islands. So that's the Pacific right now. A couple other areas that we're watching about a 40% chance of development with that one cluster of thunderstorms and that would remain south of the Hawaiian Islands. And then we have another here in the Eastern Pacific has about a 90% chance of development. And we could have a tropical depression here. Again, well off the coast of any land mass is not gonna create any kind of issues, but we could be talking about a tropical depression there in the Eastern Pacific. And we mentioned this last night, how we have a set of names for the Atlantic, of course. We have the Eastern Pacific storm names. We've already gone from Alvin all the way up towards Flossie. The next one would be named Gill. But you notice Iona's not on there. Well, it's in the Pacific, but it's in the Central Pacific. And there's a separate set of lists of names for the Central Pacific. And unlike the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, where at the beginning of the year we start at A and go to the end of the list, in the Central Pacific, we just go from one list to another to another. So if we go all the way through uh, the W name this year, then we'll go right back to A of the next list. So you don't start the new year with a new uh, you know, list. You just sort of cycle through, cycle through, cycle through. And obviously most of these are Hawaiian names because those storms are there in the Central Pacific and could affect the Hawaiian islands. So we mentioned Central Pacific names. We know typhoons have different names, Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. That's four lists of names that the World Meteorological Organization maintains. And it's in coordination with the different tropical prediction centers for different parts of the world. But how many different lists are there? Well, you think about it. I already mentioned four of them. You got the Indian Ocean, you got the Southern Pacific. There are actually 10 different lists that the World Meteorological Organization maintains and different areas do it different ways. As we mentioned, you know, the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, you know, we have a new list every day or every year. So on the Central Pacific, they go through the list of names and just continue to go through. In some areas, it's not even alphabetically, it's done alphabetically by the name of the country that submitted the name. So there are different ways that the 
uh, different regions of the world name their tropical cyclones. Of course, some are called typhoons, some are called hurricanes, some are called just tropical cyclones or just cyclones. So that's the general idea that it's different all over the world. So that's tonight's Hurricane Hub Live trivia. Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandagis will be back tomorrow. He'll have a new trivia question for you. But until then, be sure to scan the QR code to download the 13 News Now Hurricane Guide. It has information on supplies you should have on hand, emergency numbers you might need, and a whole lot more. So thanks for joining us. We're here every weekday from 8 o'clock till usually about 8, 10, 8, 15, depending on what's going on. Of course, as we get into the heart of hurricane season, you know that we'll be here giving you the latest information on what's going on. Until then, thanks for joining me tonight. Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandagis will be back here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with another edition of Hurricane Hub Live.